Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And we've got the Terrazas de los An Terrazas de los Andes. The Terrazas de los Andes. Andes? Andes, I don't know. Andes? Andes? <sighs> Let's just get going here. We've got the Terrazas Malbec. All right. This is a 2009 uh, from Mendoza in Argentina. Not Argentina. Yes, Argentina. And um, $8.99 at HEB. Uh, this is one of those wineries that, uh, or one of those wines you, you'll probably find pretty widely distributed at your local grocery store. Now, the one thing about Argentina and Chile is that they really love to talk about um, elevations and, and the altitudes that they grow these wines. Now, what I found was a really, really cool... Uh, now, I thought I had, well, the, the actual website for, for this winery, they've got probably the, the best explanation I've had in a while, um, or at least kind of describing altitude and, and wine and, and grape varietals and, and kind of what happens. Because a lot of times you just see, it just, it just like, it looks like marketing fluff. Oh, our vineyards are 3,500 feet, which I think that's what these are. You know, 3,500 feet. And you're like, okay, so... You know, they make great wine at a thousand feet, you know, or sea level. So what's the big deal? Well, we're, we're before we get into the wine, we're going to kind of talk a little geekiness. There's this thing called um, thermal amplitude. And it, it exists no matter how, what altitude it, whether, no matter what altitude you've got. Um, you've heard me talk about, or you may have read or heard other people talk about, you have the daytime temperatures and the nighttime temperatures and the difference. That's called thermal amplitude. This is a fancy way to say there's a, there's a big difference in temperature. And we've talked about it before, kind of, where you know the, the, the heat in the sun of the day um, is what gives you the sugars in the wine, or sugars in the grape, and that's what produces the sugars. And at night, when things cool down, it allows the grapes to rest. Well, when that's going on, your acid levels start rising. So what the... Um, the Andes Mountain area, or if you have you know high altitude um, vineyards, you'll get this amplitude, you'll get this differential because it gets cool at night. If you have a great coolness, you know a big range of temperatures, um, you're getting both high production, you're getting high sugar and high acid production. Okay, so that makes a little bit of sense. So their website kind of goes through. You know they have certain varietals grow to certain altitude, and as they go up, um, they they uh, as they go up in altitude, they, they have different varietals because they have found, at least in their area, that certain varietals do better at certain altitudes. Like they're not growing Chardonnay down, down at the bottom, they're growing it up top because it, it, it does better with, with um, that type of temperature, the climate up there and the temperature, temperature differential, okay, the amplitude. All right, so enough of the scientific geeky stuff. I've got my book too, so I can write stuff down. All right, so... Um, Oh, did I rinse? I don't think I rinsed. Let's rinse. Bam. Okay. Um, Malbec, that's one of those varietals from Europe that uh, man, South America has really just latched onto. They, they make some great single varietals on this thing. So um, let's get right into the wine. Yeah, this doesn't really have much on that part. All right. So. The color is uh, is actually pretty light. Um, it's not really deep. It's not. It doesn't have a dark dark color. Um, it's clear, like it should be. So I get I get a bit of smoke, maybe even tobacco, because that's one of those 
one of those um, aromas I don't key in on a lot. But since we was mentioned in the other one, I was like, maybe that's one of those descriptors I really need to start thinking about. You know, maybe that's what I'm actually smelling rather than smoke. But, you know, maybe that smokiness or that tobacco. Maybe darker red fruits. A hint of spice, but not overwhelming. Um, I would say the aroma uh, is moderate. Uh, we're going to say color depth is medium. It's, I'm going to say kind of garnet. It's clear. All right. Um, I know it's youthful because it's only a couple years old. Like I said, it's got, you know, it's got some spice, dark red fruits, and um, maybe smoke or tobacco. All right, let's see how it tastes. It's got a bit of tartness. I mean, it's it's kind of got a bit of mint, like like almost like a peppermint patty type of thing going on. Like I get I get this like chocolate and mint thing going on. Not literally, but it makes me think about that. Yeah, um, kind of chocolatey, a little bit of mint, some greenness to it, a little bit of spice, like, um, I wouldn't say it's a Christmas spiciness, but, um, yeah, it's got clove type of thing. How about clove? Something I don't think I ever talk about very often. Um, dry sweet. Uh, I, I'm going to say it's kind of a kind of an off dry. It's not real. Doesn't have much sweetness to it. Um, it's it's a medium bodied wine. It's got crisp acids. Not crisp. Yeah, it, it's it's a bit of Christmas to it. Not crisp. That's a, I'll say fresh. At least as far as descriptions here. Um, tannins, they are, I'm going to say they're, they're, they're kind of low to medium. I'm going to say they're kind of both. Um, and they're, they're kind of soft. Balance, let's look at the balance on that. That's, that's why I really want this, because I want to make sure I'm evaluating the wines more, I guess, consistently. Um... I think it's a pretty. I think it's a, a pretty fair, balanced wine. Um, it's it's everything seems to work together. Uh, the flavors are there, the acids there, the tannins are there. Nothing is overpowering, though. The the, the I would say the flavors a little bit more prominent. Um, it's it's going to have I guess minerality to it rather than fruit, um, but you've got a little bit of fruit in there too. It's it's just really it's really muted. Uh, I would say. I mean, more of a raspberry type of thing than anything else. Um, flavor and testing is moderate. Um, pretty good. I mean, for nine bucks, um, I would say definitely buy it. I mean, these are definitely good value wines. I mean, Argentina and Chile, um, you know, put themselves on the map for getting some good value wines out there. And I would totally, totally buy this wine again. Um, it's got, I, I find it's got some interesting flavors to it. Um, buy it if you find it. Uh, that's going to do it for today. As always, make sure you visit the website. Uh, get all the links all over the place. Um, you got your donations. You got your friend me ups. You got find me elsewhere on the internet, and um, <clears throat> and I've got you know the Twitter stream and all the other videos going on. But um, 
Stop by the website, leave comments. Come on, leave some comments. Tell me if you've had this wine before. If you haven't, uh, do you plan on getting it? If you've had it, what do you think about it? Um, would you give it an 87 like I'm going to give it? Ah, see, I forgot to put the score, 87. Or maybe I should put it under conclusion, 87 right there. Um, yeah, I mean, and a good wine to get all year round. 87, buy it. Visit the website. We'll see everybody again next time.